Hi, this is Jack Lipton speaking, and today I'm very happy to be talking with Mark Chalmers, the CEO of Ener America's Energy Fuels. And Mark, uh, you have just come back from Brazil, an extended stay, and you've got uh, you published some pretty important news. So, would you tell us what's going on in Brazil that's important to energy fuels in Utah? Yeah, Jack. No, it's my pleasure to be on the show. Um, yeah, big news for us. You know, we, we signed binding agreements to secure the Bahia project, um, which is in the Bahia region of Brazil, a few hundred miles north of Rio de Janeiro, uh, a very large land position. Now, we still have to do due diligence, but about 60 square miles of um, uh, develop. Well, it's been drilled uh, and well known uh, as a heavy mineral sand, a very quality heavy mineral sand deposit in Brazil which also contains substantial quantities of monazite. And, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at this as finally energy fuels will have a deposit. I mean, subject to final successful uh, completion of the due diligence. And, uh, you know, we're, we're in business. You know, this is a big step for our company. And we think that it could supply ultimately because of the size um, between uh, 3,000 to um, 10,000 tons a year of monazite sand, so between 1,500 to 5,000 uh, tons of REO per year. Uh, and it, it's important as a base load for the White Mesa Mill. So, um, you know, we're, we're focused on full integration. We believe there's going to be more news flow, not just at Bahia, but with other companies that want to align with us um, to, to feed the mill at world scale and at world competitive hopefully first quartile cost structures and rare earths without subsidies. It's my understanding that you have a total vertical integration plan for producing rare earth products. And that up until now, you haven't had a company owned domestic mine. So am, am I right in saying that this basically completes your vertical integration plan? For rare it, doesn't, it doesn't complete it, but it's an important step in that process, you know, we're looking at, well, we're basically looking at replicating the China plan when it comes to their focus on monazite. Um, and, and, but now we've secured, uh, you know, a heavy mineral sands deposit, as I said, um, you know, we think that'll, that'll be a, a big chunk of the feed in the next few years uh, to White Mesa, but we're also looking at other sources of monazite. We're talking to at least a half a dozen different players that want to feed the White Mesa mill. Um, and we're doing some creative things there where, where we, we believe we can do things that will make sure that that, that, that feed is uh, exclusive to the mill. And, um, and then, as you know, we're cracking and leaching as we speak. Um, we're doing um, separations, at least the first separation of the lanthanum out. Um, and, and look, at this is interesting, Jack. Um, uh, Logan Shumway, our mill manager, is here and you know, he at, at our AGM, he gave all the board members some 99.8% uh, NDPR produced at the mill through our continuous um, pilot plant that's producing a kilogram per day of high purity NDPR right now as we speak. And, 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 and after the oxides, as we move forward with uh, separations of the oxides, lights and heavies, we are looking towards metals. So yeah, it's, it's all happening. It's happening uh, lightning speed as compared to what most people move at in the rare earth business. And, um, but we're, we're, we have many steps to the plan, but, but having the integration is, is absolutely critical as we know, because you don't wanna have a hole in the middle of your integration plan. Oh, it, it's my understanding that Energy Fuels has been working with solvent extraction the preferred legacy system for separating the rare earths for nearly 40 years in its uranium business. Is that correct? So you're quite knowledgeable uh, yeah. about it. The White Mesa Mill, it was built as a solvent extraction facility mm -hmm. focused on um, uranium and vanadium recovery. So now it's very large scale because it's a 2000 ton per day plant. So they're very large vessels. Now, um, you know, so we're very comfortable with solvent extraction, you know, even though with rare earths, it's much, much smaller cells. So, um, yeah, the, the, the NDPR that I mentioned, and, you know, this little vial produced with, with a number of mixture settlers in our lab, 
Um, we've got some smaller vessels that we're using commercially um, in um, the current processing of the carbonate, taking out the lanthanum, and that provides this very high purity carbonate, or almost 35% NDPR. Um, but then at the same time, you know, we're, we're advancing our, our progress um, using solvent extraction to produce this 99.8% NDPR as we speak. I have to make just one comment on that. Uh, I've been following this um, technology and rares for about half a century. And quite frankly, your 35% material is the richest NDPR to come out of a solvent extraction plant that I've ever heard of. And certainly no one in the United States prior to this has ever produced su such a product. And the amazing thing, Mark, is that you're flying so low under the radar, I'm worried that that your your wings are going to are going to touch down on, on, the, on the desert. Uh, people don't realize you're already in business. Now, I, you're not shipping NDPR uh, to a commercial customer, but you're shipping mixed rare earth carbonate to a customer. Are you not in commercial quantities? Yeah, no, we're we're shipping it to um, to Neo's uh, Silmet plant in Estonia, uh, and you know, as we know, there's no commercial separation facility in the United States. Right. Um, and that's worked very well. We've got a great relationship with Constantine and the NEO team. Uh, it's a unique partnership, but it's, it's been beneficial to both of us um, for a lot of reasons. I mean, we are able to, to make product and ship it to them. They check the quality and the specifications uh, on the products that we make. Um, but at the same time, you know, Neil's very interested in sources of, um, of rare earth products, you know, you know, made in the United States. So, um, yeah, that's been very productive and, um, you know, but we want to be U.S. centric in time, but we see our relationship with Neo continuing for all the right reasons. So, you know, I think, you know, we, we, we've talked about this before, you know, a lot of people declare victory when they have a beaker of something. Okay. And, right. um, and, you know, we have a lot of beakers and we have a lot of bulky bags, um, that, that we have product in and, you know, we're doing stuff, small commercial right now. Our bottleneck right now is just more monocyte. So, you know, mm -hmm. we're actively, you know, working with, with Kimors um, uh, to, to, to get more monocyte uh, to the mill. Uh, you know, we've got this Bahia project now or subject to due diligence, but that'll close in, we believe, in 90 days. And our relationship with uh, Iperion X with their project, the Titan project in Tennessee. And then there are uh, another handful of people around the world that have projects in various jurisdictions that are looking to ship us feed for the White Mesa Mill because they know how important it is to have a U.S. centric um, rare earth processing capabilities to do this integration. But we plan to do it with feeds from multiple sources. You know, Bahia could be a third or fourth or 50 percent potentially, but we're going to need other feeds to get up to world scale. Mark, can, can you remind uh, our listeners to exactly why why doesn't everybody do this? Why why don't I open up a monazite processing plant in the Los Angeles uh, area, for example? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's all about radionuclides, and um, we have um, the licenses. Um, we have the facility uh, in Utah in San Juan County, and our core business is recovering uranium uh, and we're able to monetize the uranium. And we have the facilities to dispose of the tailings, um, state-of-the-art, triple-line, RICRA design cells for a thousand years. It is also a perpetual care facility that ultimately when the site is reclaimed will be under the stewardship of the Department of Energy. Not many people have that, okay? We do. And, and, and the fact that we can monetize uranium um, we believe ultimately we're going to monetize the thorium and we're going to provide, we believe, radionuclides for medical isotopes using these targeted alpha therapies. So, so we're going to basically um, use the whole animal here where most people, if they're looking at monazite sands, are not. They're focusing on just the rare earth. So, so this is a story that you know, actually, it is a China story because they're used, they're monetizing uranium and the thorium, but we're doing it in the United States at world standards um, with world class regulations 
uh, at a facility that is up and running and permitted um, and would be almost impossible to replicate pretty much anywhere in the world from scratch. It's not impossible, but it'd be very difficult to replicate. So let me get this straight. You're already processing monazite, removing, removing the, the uranium as a payable, storing the thorium legally. You're already uh, pre-separating the uh, first four heavy, uh, first four light rare earths, and you're producing a kilogram a day of NDPR in your 35 to 40 year old solvent extraction facility, uh, manned by people who've been running this for about 40 years. And in the meantime, you're also in the uranium business. And did you did you have any news about sales of uranium? Yeah, yeah. Like look, 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 look. Um, I announced yesterday at the AGM that we have signed three contracts, mm -hmm. three material contracts um, with two major U.S. nuclear utilities, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's all happening at Energy Fuels, okay? And, uh, you know, we're excited about that because we haven't signed long-term contracts for 10 years. You know, the focus on uh, nuclear power, base load, carbon-free energy, and reducing our dependence on Russia, okay, for nuclear products. So, um, yeah, we have a lot going on. And um, so, you know, in the last two weeks, you know, signing up the Bahia project, signing up three significant uh, contracts that run between 2023 to 2030 for uranium products. Um, you know, I don't know how to say that, you know, things are moving forward very quickly. I don't think the market fully appreciates. We, we trade with our peers. None of our peers, none of them are doing what we're doing right now. But we trade with them. They, we go up 2%. Everybody else goes up 2%. We go down. Nobody's doing what we're doing. So when people figure that out, I believe we'll get a re-rate for all the right reasons because we become the critical mineral hub of the United States of America. You, you have certainly the most dynamic company in the rare space in North America at this time. I, I, I sincerely believe that. I want to thank you for for this time and best of luck in fishing. And we'll be we'll be talking to you soon when you have your next series of, of uh, earth shattering announcements. No kidding. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Jack.